Don't tell them what my favorite plant is. They gotta stick around to the end, even if we're standing in them right now. Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm gonna cover some plants that look great in a shady space during the winter time. It's a very cold morning here. I've come to my friends uh, at Swift Creek Nursery. This is a wholesale nursery. They sell to garden centers around the uh, Raleigh area and then are all around the Southeast uh, United States. Really fantastic nursery. I've been friends with these folks for a long, long time. They've kind of given me the run of the place and they have this really, um, their shade uh, area where they grow their shade plants is all uh, limbed up pines. And so it's just kind of the perfect environment for growing a lot of these shade loving plants. And so let's find ones, I mean, most things have gone to sleep that would have gone to sleep. So the things that look great right now will definitely look great during the winter time. I'm standing uh, behind a, a group of gold dust Akuba. They have several varieties, uh, different varieties of Akuba. Uh, gold dust has the you know, people, people will call this a spotted laurel. Uh, gold dust has kind of even spotting uh, throughout the uh, leaves. These can get head high if you let them. Uh, and then uh, there's one right here that's called Pictorata that has the center yellow on it. Um, you'll see in Pictorata quite often that a lot of it looks like gold dust. And then we have the uh, gold uh, center on some portion of the leaves. Don't discount green akuba the fruit on them is beautiful in the winter time as you can see uh, see on this one and uh, several other varieties of of akuba some you know with more variegation than others uh, some with less but just a great plant uh, in a shady space and uh, looks great 12 months out of the year Another thing that actually looks great in the winter garden uh, in the south are gardenias. Uh, this is a, a variegated gardenia, so it really looks great uh, in the winter time. These are gonna be hardy from zone seven to 10. This variegated one, I'd probably just like put in seven B, uh, the green foliage varieties, probably uh, you know half a zone hardier or so. This, my experience with this uh, variegata is it's not the heaviest blooming gardenia ever, but look at what this thing looks like uh, in the winter time. It does flower, has great fragrant flowers on it. I uh, don't want to discount it too much, but uh, it doesn't bloom quite as heavily as uh, some of the green varieties, but absolutely beautiful. Uh, there's variegated, uh, there's large growing gardenias like this one that can get six feet high and then kind of mid-range, lots of mid-range gardenias that get three or four feet tall, foolproof, frostproof, jubilation, that, those would be in that group and then ground cover ones. And there's actually a variegated ground cover one, a variegated radicans gardenia. Um, I hope to find in just a minute. If I don't, I'll show you the green ones, but they all look great in the winter time. I did find a few uh, variegated radicans gardenias. This is a ground cover uh, variegated gardenia. Make sure you mound these up some when you plant them because they do not like wet feet. Uh, gardenias, the green varieties of gardenias can go definitely go in more sun, um, but I am pointing out that you see these are both being grown in some shade. I don't think they would be uh, tolerant. Uh, they'll, they'll scorch some in the absolute full sun, so great in the part shade. Next up are Pittosporum. Uh, Pittosporum are great uh, part shade, evergreen plants that uh, really shine uh, in a winter garden. Uh, this one's called Wheeler's Dwarf, and you can see why. It's a perfect little low-growing dome. Uh, I've got this one at the house. It's maybe three feet wide, 18 to 20 inches tall. It can creep up to about three feet and maybe five feet in width if you let it, but uh, kind of really, you know, this is kind of how they grow without really uh, doing any maintenance or any pruning on it. Uh, there's some variegated ones uh, back here. Uh, I have to tell you the regular right here, the regular variegated pittosporum, this thing gets monstrous. I actually had a, a neighbor take one of these out, not, not too far from this nursery actually. It was probably 15 feet tall. So, um, you know, regardless of what tags say on uh, variegated uh, pittosporum, they get big, big. Uh, but there is an option for that, which is, uh, this is Mojo pittosporum. They've got all their plants packed together because it's December here. They gotta be ready to cover them. Uh, so that's what you're looking at here. 
Uh, this is Mojo Pittosporum, which is the, the dwarf equivalent of that Wheeler's Dwarf um, over there, the variegated equivalent of that Wheeler's Dwarf. I also have this one in the landscape. It'll, it can, again, creep up to about three feet in height, a little wider than tall, but can be kept small as well. Another plant that really likes well-drained soil, so mound it up a little bit when you plant it. Of course, one of everyone's favorite uh, winter plants here in the south are going to be osmanthus. There's osmanthus fragrans, which, you know, fragrant osmanthus, uh, that blooms like crazy. It tends to need more sun than a couple of the variegated ones. A couple of the variegated ones do quite well in the part shade. Uh, this one's called Goshiki. Uh, plant tags will probably say three or four feet or something on it. I've seen this plant as tall as eight feet, slow growing though, creeps up really, really slowly. Beautiful variegation in it, super changeable during the year, like the new growth. I'm here in December, so all you're seeing is uh, a yellow and green variegation, but during the growing season, it'll have some pink hues to it. A really interesting, beautiful plant. Um, and I'll go show you another variegated uh, osmanthus as well. Here's another variegated osmanthus. This one gets quite a bit larger than, uh, than Goshiki. These are called false hollies. Uh, they look very thorny and prickly, but um, they're really not bad. They're, they're, not, they're kind of soft to the touch. Ignore this fabric and things you're seeing on the ground here. They're, they're just prepared. They've got everything packed together. They're prepared to throw covers over if it gets really cold. It's like 28 this morning. That's not cold enough to, uh, to need to cover them, but uh, that, that, that's what you're seeing that cover for. This is a great plant and honestly underused in southern landscapes. Uh, this would make a great screening plant. It's reasonably fast growing for a variegated uh, plant as well. So anyway, variegated osmanthus. Some of the other things I've shown can kind of do sun or shade. Uh, this aspidestra is definitely a shade plant. Uh, this is cast iron plant. Uh, I've shown several varieties, especially um, over the last year or so, and I have a few different varieties in my garden. Typically, nurseries just grow this, you know, the green, uh, more vigorous growing variety because they're faster to finish. But there are lots and lots of interesting variegations, stripes, spotting, all kinds of things in these. And they look great in a winter garden, as you can see right here. On older plants, you will get some old foliage that starts to look a little ratty. And this is the time of year. You can go in and clean it up. Uh, you can cut those, cut those leaves down to the ground and what's remaining is all the fresh uh, growth from this uh, previous year, which looks great in a winter garden. Another standout in the winter garden are gonna be Mahonias uh, for texture, for uh, just shiny uh, green leaves or with a bit of a blue hue, and then they flower and attract uh, pollinators to the garden in the winter time. Uh, a lot of great attributes. Uh, uh, Mahonia belii, which is the traditional Mahonia with the larger leaves, uh, is invasive uh, in, in some places, these sm some of these smaller growing varieties uh, less so. Uh, this one is Nirahira, uh, a hard one to say for me for whatever reason. Uh, it will get larger and a bit of a looser form than soft caress. I'll show you soft caress in a minute. Uh, this one can get end up a little more stretched uh, in the landscape. It is beautiful. Um, not, not knocking it at all, and, I, and I, I sold this one for years and grew this one for years uh, in my nursery. It's got this, again, blue-green hue to it. Obviously stays evergreen. Here we are in the middle of December, and its flowers are starting to come on it right now. Another variety I really love is uh, Marvel Mahonia, which I have in my home uh, landscape, and it's about to uh, flower as well. But let's go find some soft caress real quick. So this is soft caress, and you can see it's a slightly finer texture. Uh, than, the, uh, than the last variety, um, very compact form. Again, it's kind of interesting. Here we are in the middle of December and so many of these plants are uh, kind of re you know, retreating and uh, not looking great. In the, you know, in the, it, during this time of year, the color fades out of them. The, the Mahonia are sitting here with new growth on them. <laughs> they got new, new growth on them, their flower buds forming on them and uh, you know, they just almost seem to uh, to, to, to revel in the fact that it's quite cold here uh, this morning. And uh, just, again, uh, Mahonia, super easy in the shade in, the, uh, in a winter garden. On this cold morning in December, the plant that shines the most are the Camellia sasanquas. Uh, these are, uh, if you've ever you know, watched my channel for any length of time, you know Camellias are my favorite. And here we are in the middle of December and inside this house and outside this house, all around us are beautiful Camellia sasanquas in bloom, uh, braving, braving the cold mornings. 
uh, Kanjiro over here near the door is a, uh, a single pink, a very vigorous variety, been around for a long, long time. One of the faster growing camellias, uh, honestly. And uh, again, been around a long, long time. It's a single pink. Some people want, you know, all double flowers, but that, um, the flower parts being visible there in the center of the flower allow the pollinators to actually access that flower. So don't, don't discount that as you're looking at single flowers versus double flowers uh, in the landscape. Uh, this is Autumn Spirit, which is a, uh, which is a double pink. And just really quite, I mean, how, is there a more perfect, is there a more perfect flower than that? It's rose-like double, double pink. Uh, great, great foliage on that variety as well. Uh, another old one that the pollinators uh, love is uh, Setsugeku, a single white uh, form. It's, again, it's been around for a long, long time. Here's a near perfect flower right here. And you'll see occasionally a lot of white uh, camellias will have, you know, little touches of pink, which this one has right on the edge of that, right on the edge of that petal. But you see, you get all the flower parts uh, in the center of that one. A uh, kind of dwarf uh, variety here is called Hot Flash. And you can really see the growth habit difference on a more spreading camellia than an upright camellia. The first three we saw there were upright. This one is gonna be more of a spreading, uh, wider growing variety. Double red, um, you know, here's, here we are almost at Christmas time and this, this thing's got red flowers on it. Uh, how can you beat that? Uh, this is Showa Nosaki. Uh, this is an, old, an older variety that, uh, again, has that kind of a weeping habit. It will creep up and get quite big. This is, if I was gonna name my favorite varieties, I think that October Magic Orchid is my, is my favorite currently. Showa Nosaki's not far behind. Uh, such a heavy flowering variety. Uh, the clicker that you saw for this video or the thumbnail that you saw for this video is from here. You get these, you know, multiple flowers here opened on a single stem. And man, this is just, it's just perfect. Just an absolutely perfect flower. But he just, uh, Swift Creek here grows a, just a ton of, uh, of camellia. These are Sisanquis. These are the fall blooming camellias. He also grows Japonicas and then some hybrids uh, as well. But I think you probably already knew this was going to be my uh, favorite plant for the uh, shade garden uh, in the wintertime. Thank you guys for following the channel and don't forget to subscribe for upcoming content.